My name is Jose Nieto with the Borland Brewer Clinic Advanced Therapeutic Endoscopy Center. I'm here to discuss the publication of EUS Guided Fine Needle Core Liver Biopsies, a modified wet suction, one pass, one activation uh, technique, a retrospective study of 165 patients. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to discuss uh, the recently published article uh, titled EUS Guided Fine Needle Core Liver Biopsies Using a Novel 19 Gauge uh, Core Needle with a Modified One Pass, One Actuation Wet Suction Technique. Uh, this study was mainly done because there's, although there's a significant amount of literature and use of uh, fine needle cores for liver lesions, pancreatic lesions, there's very limited data in the use of fine needle cores for benign parenchymal disease of the liver. This study has allowed us to look at a new novel uh, needle. It was a 19 gauge uh, shark core needle by Medtronic, which allowed us to sample both the right and the left lobe of the liver. The purpose of the study was to look at the efficacy and the safety of using a new core needle on benign liver disease. So the reason we wanted to look at EUS guided liver biopsies is the conventional uh, method of liver biopsy has been percutaneous or transjugular uh, with very good results and low complications, but it does require a significant amount of time of recovery, usually requiring about four hours post procedures. And there's a very there's a risk of um, a hematoma. With EUS guided liver biopsies, we wanted to prove that there's significantly less side effects or adverse effects, as well as a higher efficacy of obtaining uh, and improved samples. We used the criteria from the ASLD where an adequate sample was defined as at least two centimeter core and at least 11 complete portal triads in each specimen. The ability of using endoscopic ultrasound guided liver biopsies allows us to sample the right and the left lobe. A previous study has shown that about one-third of the patients will have a difference in fibrosis score between each lobe. So therefore it was important to sample both lobes in our study to get a complete picture of what's going on with the liver. In our study, 165 patients were referred uh, with unexplained abnormal liver-associated tests. Uh, patients also were referred for evaluation of pancreobiliary disease using endoscopic ultrasound and some patients were referred for an upper endoscopy and at the same time evaluation of pancreobiliary disease with endoscopic ultrasound. Patients who were not able to undergo uh, percutaneous liver biopsies and required sedation were also referred. And patients who had a previous non-diagnostic uh, percutaneous liver biopsy was also referred for evaluation with EUS guided liver biopsy. The inclusion criteria in our study uh, included patients over the age of three, also uh, who were referred for abnormal liver function tests of unclear etiology. If there was an abnormal appearance on endoscopic ultrasound of the liver and there was no evidence of pancreobiliary disease to explain the abnormal liver associated test, the patient underwent any U.S. guided liver biopsies. If a patient was referred for grading and staging of known liver disease, the patient also underwent an EUS guided liver biopsy at that time. Exclusion criteria in our study included if the patient was pregnant, if the patient was under the age of three, if the patient was unable to give consent for the procedure, or was too unstable to undergo sedation based on an ASA score of greater than four. If the patient couldn't, un couldn't stop their anticoagulation and was considered high risk of bleeding, the patient was also excluded. Or if during the time of an endoscopic ultrasound, the patient was found to have another etiology, such as a pancreatic mass or common bile duct stones to explain the abnormal liver function test. Or if the patient was also found to have a liver mass, which explained the patient's abnormal liver function test. 
These patients were all excluded. A retrospective chart review was then done of 165 consecutive patients who underwent U.S. guided liver biopsy using the modified wet suction one pass one actuation technique with a novel 19 gauge needle. The method that was used to obtain liver tissue was as follows. First the 19 gauge uh, core needle uh, was opened, the satellite was removed, it was flushed then with saline. Once the right or left lobe was localized by the endosonographer, the 19 gauge needle was passed down. The targeted uh, parenchyma was then uh, measured and uh, one thrust from the needle was passed into the liver tissue. At this time, uh, one actuation only had been done. The syringe was placed at a 20 uh, cc suction vacuum. It was slowly withdrawn. When saline was displaced into the syringe, the suction was stopped and the tissue was obtained. The needle was completely withdrawn and the tissue sample was flushed into a histology bottle. This was then repeated for each lobe. The demographics we looked at uh, included uh, complete portal triads of each specimen, intact core length, as well as total core length of the whole specimen. Pathology results were also reviewed, as well as complications were noted. The patients after they underwent the liver biopsies are evaluated immediately and they were monitored for 30 minutes uh, post-procedure. Within 48 hours, patients received a telephone call and then two weeks to three weeks, uh, the patient had a follow-up visit. So in our retrospective review of 165 patients, 41% were male in our cohort. The average age was 52, and the BMI was 28.9. The median complete portal triad was 18. The, total, the mean intact longest intact length of the specimen was 2.4 centimeters, and the mean total specimen length was 6 centimeters. Uh, we had three minor complications in our study. Two patients had persistent right upper quadrant abdominal pain post-procedure, which required additional pain medication. These eventually resolved within 24 hours. We had a patient with a capsular hematoma, which was self-limiting. It required admission in one unit of blood transfusion. The patient uh, recovered and was discharged within 48 hours uh, post-liver biopsy. In conclusion, EUS guided liver biopsy using a modified wet suction, one pass, one actuation technique was extremely efficacious. With a total specimen length of six centimeters, an average of 18 complete portal triads were obtained, and a low complication rate of 1.8%. This retrospective analysis showed that novel core needle is both efficacious and safe, but we need a multi-center perspective trial to evaluate these results in the future. I would like to thank my co-authors, including Dr. Sammy Saw for his help with hepatology and Dr. David Holloman for his help with pathological review of these cases. I will also like to thank the Boiling Room Research Department for the help in abstract and collecting the data.